Hi everybody, Barbara Manconi Smith here. It's been a while since I've been here live, but um, life, you know, is still in progress and happening. So um, we're moving again in two weeks. Um, last time we moved with, was eight months ago, and eight months ago we moved three times. So we still have mold issue. Um, apparently it's a common problem in Southern California. So we're on a move again. Um, and I've been busy with uh, planning the next, uh, the next part of the year with you guys, of course. And um, so I've decided to come here uh, right now today, first and foremost, because there is a lot of questions that have come and I know that I owe you answers. And two, because it's one of those rare weekends where I don't have a group with you, so I thought I would just uh, come up here. I know that there was no notice, so most of you will watch the replay of this, but I know I'm gonna address questions that you guys have asked in the group, um, emails that I've received, and kind of more recurring questions, especially because uh, new programs are coming up. So um, today we're going to discuss detox symptoms, lymphatic congestions, and um, try to find a balance in the medical medium lifestyle. So cleansing versus lifestyle. And those, some of those are recurring questions and some are um, just new questions I just received from you guys. But anyway, for those of you who don't know me, and I know we have many, many new um, members. My name is Barbara Mancuni smith uh, I am the founder of this group and I also am a, an integrative nutritionist working uh, with the medical medium protocol and more. So, uh, some of you may know me for the lymphatic cleanse. Um, it is true, I designed the lymphatic cleanse not because it was uh, anything that I particularly focused on or studied on, but because after many years working with you guys and working with the medical medium protocol, I realized that there was a missing piece, piece in the in the in the overall health journey, and that was um, a specific focus on the lymphatic cleanse and the elimination pathways, I call them. So a lot of you complain of detox symptoms. And again, please feel free to just say hi, tell us where you're watching from. If I don't know you, say hi. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer all of them. So just say, write your questions on the side, um, on the bar, and I will get to them as soon as, as I can. So today is your space for you to ask questions. So. But in the meantime, let's keep moving. Um, detox symptoms. So a lot of you complain um, often about detox symptoms and whether uh, making a distinction, whether they should keep forward, moving forward and pushing through or whether, um, whether that something means something major, something is actually, some of you mentioned, um, I feel I'm broken. Uh, things are, are getting um, worse for me. Something has, has been damaged. So let's start with saying that um, as we go through life, we build up toxicity in our body. And that's nothing that I need to spend time on because you all understand that, right? So the, the goal of any cleanse is to remove this toxicity because it's the toxicity in our body that creates um, the, the imbalances. Toxicity, they can take the form, of course, of viruses, uh, bacteria, all sorts of pathogens, but also uh, environmental toxicity that we then um, breathe in and absorb. Um, so from pollution to heavy metals to radiation. Uh, and if you guys, you know, I know that most of you have read Anthony's book, so I know that you're very well versed in this. But I know that some of you just have heard of Anthony and you're kind of just... Um, um, tiptoeing into, into the whole medical medium protocol. So just to give you a very brief overview, you know, toxicity is built by many, many factors, uh, environmental and internal, right? Uh, some are also genetic that we have received uh, and inherited by our parents. So the bottom line is we all have toxicity in our body. Now, the reason why some people uh, experience more symptoms uh, and more chronic illnesses than others is simply simply one major factor which is their ability to eliminate this toxicity now this is not based on medical medium this is not based on any other theory or doctors this is simply a fact a fact that um, science knows very well apparently doesn't really spend much time into understanding how to improve that um, and this is based, of course, of my clinical experience with all of you guys. So when I speak with certainty, and if you guys hear an accent, I'm 
I lived in I live in the US but I'm Italian so that brings me also to being a little bit more blunt um, I don't sugarcoat things I just tell them um, as they are and I know that I'm not everybody's cup of tea so I understand that but just know that everything that comes out of my mouth is not um, to endorse anybody is not to belong to any specific cult or set it is just generally from what I've experienced everything I've studied but the bottom line is I think we're going to all agree that most, if not all, of the symptoms that we experience, including chronic illnesses, diseases, cancer, um, they are all the result of built-up toxicity in the body and the body's an inability to eliminate such toxicity. So this is kind of the premise of everything I do and everything I work with with you guys. Um, but again, I'm not the only one saying this. It's just kind of a known fact. Now, how we go about eliminating this toxicity, it's what changes among practitioners, among uh, gurus and doctors and, um, and health enthusiasts. So this is why we're here. Now, within the medical medium world, uh, Anthony has written extensive literature about, um, about the effect that pathogen-specific viruses have on our body in combination with uh, heavy metals and toxicity, environmental toxicity, and how they wreck havoc our body. So if you are here, it's because you've read Anthony's books, or at least one, or you've heard him talking and what he's saying is resonating with you. And Anthony is particularly big on chronic illnesses. So all the chronic illnesses that the medical community just brushes off as, you know, you gotta live with that, especially the so-called autoimmune. Now with Anthony and many other practitioners as well, we know that there's not such a thing as autoimmune. Um, so the body is basically not attacking itself. And with this in mind, we also got a very liberating feeling that um, an autoimmune condition, it is not a death sentence, nor a lifelong sentence. Because if you go to a doctor, they will tell you that once diagnosed with an autoimmune condition, you're going to have it for life. You can manage the symptoms, but there's no cure. So this couldn't be further from the truth. I am the living existence, uh, like many others, um, a living proof of this fact being completely faulty. So I was diagnosed with Hashimoto and hypothyroidism. I have never gone on medication. I self-treated with um, nutrition and some supplementation and lifestyle changes, I would say. And there's no sign of Hashimoto in, in my blood. Uh, there's no sign of hypothyroidism in my blood. Um, so it can be done. It can absolutely be done. Now, let's go back to, so we established the premises that Built-up toxicity over time is what, and in the body's inability to eliminate such toxicity is what brings us to uh, pain, uh, diseases, chronic illnesses, and more. So now we've read Anthony's book and we got on, on his cleanses, especially his last book, Cleanse to Heal. Everybody's jumping on cleanses. Everybody's doing mono eating. Okay, and 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 as you do that, you start experiencing things in your body, and this is a beautiful thing. So I know that some of you are scared and concerned, and I read a lot of your posts, although I don't get to respond to most of you, but um, I read them all. And you guys are concerned that, you know, you are not able to do full-on cleanses, you're not able to do eye fruit, you're not able to even take supplementations because your body has a, a, a very intense reaction. So first and foremost, I want to just give you peace of mind that um, the first person or thing you need to listen to is your body. You don't have to listen to me, you don't have to listen to Anthony or any other practitioners, even close any other book, just start tuning into your body because your body talks to you. And the way your body talks to you, it's very unique. So the way your body talks to Barbara is a different way than the, it talks to Naomi or Karen or Wallace or, or George, very different. And so the comparison game doesn't work. It doesn't work because there are so many unique bioindividualities, as many as we are. So there isn't a standard way in which the body is going to react. Um, so use the support group to, to ask questions, especially to ask for support. You know, that is why I created it. Because we, are never meant to do, we were never meant to do this alone. And the support is key. But do not use the group to, to ask for, okay, what do I have to do? What does it mean if this happens? Um, because any answer is as good as, as your answer, you know? And everybody that can answer, especially non-practitioners, will tell you that um, they can only speak for their own experience. That might be very different than yours. And why? Because we're chemically different inside of the body. 
there isn't like our fingerprint, there isn't internally one person that is the same as the other, even genetically, even people that are genetically related. So in, also know that your microbiome, for instance, your flora changes constantly. And basically when the, ch when the flora changes, you are basically another person. So you will have completely different reactions to things that you would not used to react before, even medications, even supplementations, even cleansing. So we're never the same person within ourselves and for sure we're not the same person that the people around us, even people within our family. So use this group wisely. Don't use this group to, to know what to do. You know what to do. You see how your body reacts. Now, I wanna give you a peace of mind knowing that anytime you do anything, whether I mean, when you start a cleanse, you're more mindful. And so you start checking every single uh, response that the body has. But I promise you that every time you eat anything, your body has a response, whether you are aware of it or not. Every time you go through stressful moments, even they're very, very tiny, your body goes through changes and reacts. A um, few weeks ago, we had a scare. I thought my, we thought my husband had COVID. Just the thought of it, just a single, I mean, I wasn't completely, I wasn't really scared, but you know, I was concerned because, you know, COVID is very contagious. So if he has it, possibly our old household was going to get it. So I measured my blood pressure. I was having no symptoms, but, you know, I'm, I'm very in tune with my body. So just the thought of my husband possibly having COVID spiked my blood pressure to a very, very high number. And I tend to have low blood pressure. So even if we don't feel anything, our body internally is constantly reacting to everything. I mean, there, it's not that your body reacts to the cleanse. It's not that your body is reacting to the supplements. Your body is constantly in reaction mode. Now, when you are on a cleanse mode, you are more aware. And so you're concerned about taking specific supplements or the quantity or eating more potatoes, less potatoes, high fruit, low fruit, more juices, less juices, because you put your mind into it. But I just want you to know that this machine, this temple that we have uh, that brings us through life, it's constantly speaking to you. So when you want to heal from chronic illness, the first thing I advise my clients is to get in tune with your body. Forget about cleanses, forget about books, forget about podcasts and lives and me talking. Just take this. Get in touch with your body and start seeing how your body reacts, not to the cleanse, but on a regular basis. Start to see how your body reacts when you feel happier. Write down your symptoms and, and then check daily and see, oh, because you know what happens is that when we're symptomatic, we really focus on what's on hand. But then symptoms are going away, especially when you start cleaning up your diet and, um, and then we forget of the ones we have and we just still focus on what we have, what, what's left. So I have a lot of clients that I have to remind them, hey, but do you remember you have you know, plantar fasciitis and it's no longer there? Do you remember that you couldn't sleep at night and now you can? Do you remember you used to have this burning sensation on your skin is no longer there? Because she's still focusing on the fact that she has you know, whatever uh, condition is going on. So the body reacts and talks to us every day, whether we are on a cleanse or not. It's just up to us to to tune in so that's the first thing we should do we should get to know ourselves because the more we know ourselves the no the more we know how we react and the more we have the key and the tools to really uh, start really creating our customized um health plan so step one two um as i said we all have built up toxicity right so build up toxicity makes it to where at some point it is going to show up if it's not going out with symptoms at first little subtle symptoms and we're so busy with our daily life that we just brush them off if we can be so functional we got no time for symptoms right so what i see happen and you know myself included we brush off small little symptoms it's gonna go it's fine and, and you keep moving but that is us being disconnected from our body every time there's even a little itch the body's telling us something just because it's a little hitch though and it's not you know a major chronic illness or debilitating um factor that is you know, keeping us in bed, it doesn't mean that the body is not talking. So from a simple little itch to a gray hair, an extra gray hair, to uh, the color of our thumb, to the consistency of our stool, the body's talking to us. So I, what I do in my cleanses, in my, in my lymphatic cleanse that I know most of you know me for, I get people in touch with their body. That's the first thing to do. You have to know what your body is doing, how your body is responding. That's why we got into tongue studying, we got into stool analysis, we got into checking our blood pressure, our glucose readings, our body temperature. We get into self-checks because it's important that you understand that. 
And then you learn these tools, you keep them with you forever, and you can use them for yourself, for your family, and you can gauge how your body's doing. Um, the second thing is, anytime we're getting to any source of cleanse, or we change anything, it doesn't even have to be a cleanse, but every time we change from, you know, we go from um, eating meat to no eating meat. That is not necessarily a cleanse per se, but the body will have a huge reaction. There will be a chemical reaction inside of your body. And I tell you this because uh, I need you to be aware of what's happening in the body. So when you go from a high protein diet to a low protein diet, uh, and that really means a low fat diet, uh, the body changes accordingly. Because the body is, uh, is like this very, uh, um, very sophisticated computer that uh, works in osmosis. So it changes and adjusts based on you know, the circumstances, internal and external. So when we don't have an, a lot of meat and dairy and high fat diet, the body reduces the amount of enzyme, digestive enzymes, acids, bile production, because it doesn't need it anymore. It doesn't need it because those are needed to break down heavy complex protein and fat versus fruit or vegetables that it doesn't require as much, okay? So even if you feel like you're not on a cleanse, your body is changing chemically inside. You have changed. That is why when people say, well, you know, I've been without meat or fat, low fat for a while. Now, every time I add a steak, you know, I feel like bloated or it's sitting on my stomach. Of course it is because you've changed inside. So your body hasn't produced for a long time or even short time enough bile and, and, and enzyme, digestive enzymes and acids to break that down. Now, it's not that you can't do that anymore. You have to prime your body. So um, be mindful of that. We'll already explain probably 50% of your symptoms that you, you write or ask me about because now you understand that the body constantly is um, adjusting and changing. So when the body changes this way, you can't just go out, come out of the cleanse and go have a pizza. Not because you will never be able to have a pizza, but because the body is absolutely not prepared for that. So we need, it's basically give them a, a briefing call and say, hey, we're gonna do that. So I need to do, you know, increase the amount of bile, increase the amount of acids, increase the amount of digestive enzymes. And the body changes because it's such a sophisticated machine. So if you're not having a lot of um, refined sugar, for instance, the body is not producing. It's so smart. The enzymes needed to metabolize this type of carbs. So um, if you're not having high fat, the body will just reduce the amount of bile because it's not needed. Um, now, with this, though, comes my second point. The first point was we all have built up toxicity and our symptom, um, uh, symptoms and and chronic illnesses and all, all that is just an expression of our body is in inability to eliminate this toxicity. Okay. Second point is every time the body changes and it changes constantly. So when we ask the body to go into a low fat, um, you know, very, very, um, in the cleansing mode, it lowers all this, this, uh, levels that I discussed enzymes, bile production, acids and whatnot. Every time we ask the body to then get into, have a piece of avocado when we haven't had avocados or fat for a while, and then, you know, all the way to animal produ um, products or, uh, you know, more high fat diet, even good fat, um, the body needs energy to start producing this. And it won't do that because the body just adjusts, as I said, it's just adjusting to what we're giving that, to internal and out external circumstances. So the, pro the point is that I'm trying to make here, and I make really a big point of it in my lymphatic cleanse, is that every time everything is energy. Everything requires energy. So for the body to start, you know, um, upping up the production of bile, uh, the production of enzymes, or the production of the right enzymes, because now we're eating protein again, or animal protein again, uh, or we're eating eye fat again, it requires the body energy. So metabolic energy being the first, where is this energy being taken from? You know, there's nothing that, um, that, is, um, that comes out of nowhere. You know what I'm saying? So if the body will, just because we don't feel it or we don't, are not aware of it, it doesn't mean that this is not happening in our body. So asking the body to increase our bile production requires metabolic energy. Asking the body to, to produce new enzymes now because now we're eating in again animal protein or we're eating again more fats or nuts or grains uh, when we weren't requires energy so the body has to take this energy somewhere 
are we in agreement and you guys please i don't see comments so maybe um that's not usual so if you have any questions if you think okay i agree with you thumb up if you say well i don't understand this please 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 you know interact with me because i want this to be interact and interactive for those of you who are watching um and i know that your questions and doubts will also help people that will be watching the replay later so the body requires energy and that is the base of everything meaning that everything requires energy so for you to wake up from uh, to wake up in the morning stand up from the bed and go about your life you need energy that's why a lot of you come to me with chronic fatigue syndrome saying i have no energy that's your body talking to you so we need to find energy for every process whether it's outside of us or inside of us we requires we require energy so the the premise of the cleanse of the premise of in particular my lymphatic cleanse is to ask the body to use the little amount of energy possible to process uh, to for to use to metabol uh, for metabolic energy and leave the rest to go and help reset the system so as you know possibly point number three of this conversation the body has an innate uh, self-healing ability and you see this when you cut yourself when you cut yourself you don't have to do anything the body knows exactly what to do to go and mend the wound to the point that then the skin is complete whole and you have not done anything the body knows exactly what to do so you have to believe and agree with me that whatever happens on the outside is also happening on the inside but why the problem is when we start exhibiting symptoms, when we start having the so-called diagnosis, the chronic illnesses, all the way to cancer and you know major major um, cardiovascular diseases and whatnot, the problem is that the body's self-healing mechanism has been inhibited. So it's not that some we have. By the way, you guys maybe have heard, heard this or read. We have cancer cells in our body in every given moment. Now, the reason why not everybody ends up with cancer is because of that body's innate ability to self-healing. The body can take those cancer cells under control, can keep them under control, can tag them for, destroy, uh, for destruction. When the process is impeded and then the, the cancer cells take over and start populating, then what is telling us, remember at the beginning I said your body is always talk, talking to you, when we come up with a cancer diagnosis, with MS diagnosis, with uh, any diagnosis, the body is talking to us. In this point, louder. We don't wake up one day with cancer, the body has been talking to us steadily until you know it develops cancer. Cancer doesn't develop overnight. Um, and so any other chronic illness don't develop overnight, overnight, right? Some start already early on in childhood. And Anthony talks about the inheritance of, uh, of you know, um, viral load, pesticides, heavy metals, and genetic weaknesses. So, um, so going back to um, to the energy, in my lymphatic cleanse, I I designed the cleanse so that we ask the body to use the very very little uh, metabolic energy based on the food that we eat. It doesn't mean that we're not eating. It means that we make choices food-wise that uh, would require the body to really use very little, very little energy so that we can leave that energy, the rest of the energy, for the body to use it for, for self-healing. That is why during the lymphatic cleanse, people experience all sorts of healing in places that we're even thinking about. People cross the legs that they were not able to cross for 40 years. People um, heal eczema. People heal, uh, you know, starts to sleep. People start uh, losing weight. People, I mean, all sorts of things. So this is why the lymphatic cleanse is not for one specific condition, but it's for the body's, you know, point number one, to support the body's ability to eliminate toxicity. Once we lower toxicity, the body knows exactly what to do to reset the system. But without eliminating toxicity, there isn't no healing. So when we get into a cleanse, you guys tell me the UFC. You're symptomatic so you're so concerned even this morning i was reading about someone saying you know i really can't do anything i can't i can't have fruit i can't have the body's talking to you right and what the body's telling you is that it's not that the fruit is the problem it's not that the supplement is the problem the problem is that the body can is a capacity your body is a capacity and cannot take any more toxicity so we all agree that when we are on a cleaner diet on a cleanse mode the point is to stir up toxins to then eventually, hopefully, escort them out. 
But if we're stirring up toxins and this toxicity is not going anywhere, what we're all doing is really increased toxicity in the body. And for some of you, the toxicity, toxicity is already so high due to an impacted elimination system that you can't take anymore. So let's say that you have just this little space left and this is all toxicity, right? In an imaginary bucket um, of toxicity in the body. So you start doing celery juice and then that, that does things because you guys, whether you've read Anthony's Celery book or if you've heard him talking, I mean, now we know um, left and right what the celery, the potency of the celery juice. But I will also extend to other juices. I will also extend it to specific supplementation. And first and foremost, I will extend it to the heavy metal detox smoothie. So does it work? Yes, it works. But should it be used by everybody? No, not at all. Why? Because of this bucket. So if you are a capacity, toxicity-wise, because of your inability or impacted elimination um, situation. Adding even celery juice, uh, adding even the heavy metal detox smoothie, and the heavy metal detox smoothie is so potent. And the last thing you wanna to bring to the surface and not eliminate is heavy metals. It is better that you leave the metals where they are because the body is so smart, right? So there's plan B, C, and D, and the body knows that it needs to coat uh, specific metal, specifically metals in the lipids because they're so corrosive and you guys know because when you do uh, any sorts of heavy metal chelation you have all sorts of neurological issues why because now the the, the metals are free flowing and because any part of vir um, vir viruses that you have in the body is spinning off of it and populate populating but the neurological issues are really heavy metals so so you feel you feel the symptoms but it's not because you're not able to clean, uh, to, to get on a cleanse or have more fruits or whatever. It's because your elimination pathways are impacted. You are not properly eliminating. So the last thing you want is to bring things to the surface that were somewhat safely tamed. Now, I'm not saying that they're safe to stay there. I'm saying that if you have any metals or even any viruses or whatnot, it is, the body is smarter than us. So the body knows that they should be tamed. And usually the the majority of toxins, we find them in the visceral belly, in the visceral fat in our belly area and in our brain. That's why we have all these neurological issues with the metals, because they are really able to pass uh, the brain barrier and then the body tries to capture them in the fat to try to tame them. But when we try to steer this, this and get on the heavy metal detox smoothie without even knowing that we are able to effectively eliminate, that is when we create the zapping feeling in the head, dizziness, vertigo, uh, burning sensation, zapping feeling from head to toes. I mean, I've heard all of them and some of them I've experienced myself because I've been um, damaged by heavy metals. So what we need to do is to first lower toxicity. How do we lower toxicity? So that there's space, right? So that we can bring more toxicity to the surface and temporarily increase toxicity level because then we know that we can eliminate. So how do we lower toxicity? We have to unclog our elimination pathways. There, there is no other way. I mean, and I now I've been doing it over and over again and I can tell you that um, it works. I mean, it's not even a theory. It's not even like, this is Barbara's philosophy, this is such and such, this is how it is. And what I'm saying doesn't go against Anthony. In fact, if anything enriches and given, gives you an explanation as to why maybe. Once you get on medical medium protocol, you start getting weight. Once you get on medical medium protocol, you start exhibiting symptoms that you didn't have before, or worsening of symptoms. It is not because the medical medium protocol doesn't work. It can save lives. However, no protocol, doesn't matter who, what protocol, if you do not effectively and efficiently eliminate the toxicity that the protocol brings to the surface, you are not gonna get better and possibly you're gonna get worse. So I, the reason why I designed the, the lymphatic cleanse, this is, I didn't go to a specific study for lymphatic cleanse. I, everything I do, I, I work with you and I learn from you. So after years of studying and years of working with you guys, I realized that that was the missing point. Uh, liver rescue, yes the liver is sluggish, it's toxic, it's overburdened, all of it. And please listen to Antonis and read his books to understand why the liver is the master detoxifier and why we need to pay attention. However, and the reason why I have people doing this cleanse over and over again, my lymphatic cleanse, is because it works. They see, some, they see results and it's 100% medical medium compliance because as I said, I'm not saying anything different, I'm just adding a different layer, which is, we start from the assumption that we need to fix the liver, right? 
True. However, the liver is not our sewage system. The liver is our detoxifier. The liver filters the blood. Yes. However, if who, who, what is our sewage system? Our lymphatic system. Our lymphatic system is the one that is in charge of taking the toxins that have been filtered out by the liver and takes them and take them out. But if that process and then goes to the kidneys and then they go out for elimination and your colon of course is involved too. But if two elimination, this three I would say, right? Your poop and your pee. If you don't eliminate, and I would say from your skin as well, your third kidneys. If your elimination pathways, that's why, I mean, it's called the lymphatic glands, but it's really about elimination pathways. If your elimination pathways are not working properly, it doesn't matter how much we try to relieve the liver because the toxins are not going out. So this poor liver, in fact, it's gonna get inundated again by toxicity that is not going out, it's recirculating, and liver is asked to continue to do the work. So I can tell you that at least at least a good 70% of the reason why the liver is overburdened in all of us. And Anthony talks about it as a pandemic. We all have some level of sluggish liver, clogged liver, fatty liver, because the, the liver is doing double, triple, four times the work it needs to do, because it's not just tending to the daily toxins, it's also tending to the toxicity that comes back in because it's not going out. So I beg you guys, before you consider to do anything, and again, when you get, when you, whether you're symptomatic, whether you've been diagnosed with autoimmune condition, a chronic illness, that you've been plagued by chronic illnesses for years, um, you know that when you get, you decide to change your life and get into a health. So I was discussing the fact that pay attention to when you wash your dishes by hand and see that um, when you have a fruit bowl, you can just basically rinse it under the water and then put it to dry. But if you have a dish with, with there was even simple oil, like olive oil, avocado oil, you can just simply rinse it under the water. You need to take some soap, you need to start scrubbing. And so the same happens inside of your body. It takes the body very little metabolic energy to digest fruit, juices, and so on. It takes the body more energy, like, you know, the soap and the scrubbing um, comparison to go and break down the fat, um, you know, the heavy protein and, and, and whatnot. So because everything is about energy, the premise of the lymphatic cleanse is to ask the body to do as little work as possible so that we can let the body free to go and reset itself the same way that it, heal, it knows how to heal a wound. Or even when, you know, internally you know that this happens, when you know that um, you have symptoms, you have pain, and then all of a sudden the pain goes away. Why do you think the pain has gone away? The pain has gone away because the body knows exactly what to do to bring it back to balance. But again, it requires the body energy to do that. So be mindful of what you put into your body because every time you ingest something, you are asking your body to use energy. So if you are experiencing chronic illnesses, if you are experiencing symptoms, you've been diagnosed, all you want to be mindful is how much energy am I asking the body to use for this food that I'm nourishing myself with? And choose the least amount of energy needed because you want to leave the body as free as possible to go and reset itself using the self-healing mechanism that it was that we were all gifted with and just to be clear you're not to seek to heal yourself to self-heal yourself you're not too old you're not too uh genetically you know um impacted to heal yourself we all have this we can all heal i've seen people coming back from diseases and i'm talking about ALS and thing in cancer that people said, you know, there's no hope. I see people completely straighten themselves out, but not because they got a major surgery going, not because they got some, you know, magic supplementation going because they let the body do the work, but we cannot, we should not get in the way of the body. So by using tons of supplementations, by using the wrong diet, by, um, surrounding ourselves with the wrong people, we um, are getting in the way of the body because we're asking the body to use energy for things other than self-healing. And that, I want you guys, if this video will ever make it to you guys, um, I want you guys to take this. Be mindful of what are you asking your body to work on. If you've been diagnosed with cancer, what you want your body to work on is to get rid of cancer. Now, it is important to understand why the cancer got died in the first place, but all you want to do 
it's not to destroy the cancer because you're not destroying the, the reason why, if you're not addressing the reason why the cancer came in the first place. And the reason why the cancer, as long as um, together with all the other autoimmune condition and chronic condition and um, you know life-threatening conditions, they come and express in the body for one reason, one reason only. Um, build up toxicity and inability of the body to eliminate such toxicity. It doesn't matter if the toxicity is viral with combination of metals and pesticides and toxicity because we all have it. But guess what? We're, we all have it. We all have viruses. Anthony talks about it, a bunch about it. We all breathe, you know, we all breathe air that is less than clean. We all are very stressed. We all are in the pandemic. We all have been exposed to metals and vaccinations and whatnot. And yet we don't all express the same symptoms or the same same diseases. Why? Because our ability to eliminate is different. Some people have ability to eliminate toxicity. Some people have less ability to eliminate toxicity. Some people react to mold. Some people don't react to mold. Some people develop chemical sensitivity. Some people don't um, develop chemical sensitivity. So what I'm trying to say, and I expressed this at the beginning of this talk, is we're all by individual. But having viruses, having metal exposure, Heavy, um, having radiation and, and uh, vaccine exposure does not grant, grant us to get sick and get cancer or get Alzheimer's or get diabetes and all that. We're all different because we all have a different ability to eliminate. So if you take anything out of this talk is be mindful of what you ask your body to do with the energy that it has available. If I were sick, if I were at chronic condition, what I would want to ask my body is to work uh, to to spare as much energy as I can to give the body the energy it needs to self-heal. The body heals is not the supplements, I promise you. The supplements can help, of course, but again, every supplement needs the blessing of the liver, like Anthony says. So ask your body, ask yourself what do you want your body to do? What do you want your body to work on? And, um, and then and then act accordingly. So energy is key. Remember that. Everything that happens in our body, any process, any breathing, any breath, it's energy, requires energy. So be conscientious of what you feed yourself on your plate and off your plate. Be conscientious of the people that you have, the toxicity that you have in your life that is outside of your plate. Be conscientious of how much stress you have in your life that is becoming chronic and you just brush it off like the little nagging symptom that I told you at the beginning but you cannot brush off stress. You need to be mindful about that as well because it requires the body energy to overcome it. And so at the end of the day, when we eat the wrong diet, when we uh, surround ourselves with the wrong people, when we live in a chronic state, state of toxicity, when we, um, we have already built up toxicity from you know childhood that, and we have an impacted elimination um, pathways, then, then there's very little space for the body to go and self-heal because it has to use the energy to actually put up a lot of fire, put out a lot of fires, to overcome, you know, the stress and toxicity, to just basically function. And a lot of us end up merely functioning, merely breathing, merely, you know, dragging dragging to life, through life. But that's not what we want. That's not where health is, right? So health is when you're thriving. Health is when we can create and co-create. Uh, with the universe. That is where health is. And that's your uh, birth-given right. And you need to claim that. And as I said, um, you're not too sick for that. You're not too sick for uh, self-healing. You're not too old. You're not too uh, disease-ridden. If, if anything, if you feel pain, if you feel symptoms, your body is working properly. Your body is telling you, hey, I can't take this toxicity anymore. Eventually, toxicity that is also high toxicity, high acidosis in the body, because to toxins from a chemical perspective are corrosive, are on the acidic side of chemistry. So the body is saying, hey, I can't take this uh, acidity anymore. I can't take this toxicity anymore. And eventually, things are going to start to be damaged. And that's what happens and when the toxicity enters the cells because there's a whole cell metabolism it's so cell metabolism right when it enters the cells that's when the cells is damaged from the inside and that's when you have cancer for instance so can we reverse this 100 percent? because remember if the body creates it the body can eliminate it can destroy it 
hundred percent with everything. There isn't a disease that is too far advanced. There isn't a disease that the body hasn't created that it cannot eliminate. But as I said, we have not to get in the way of the body, of the self healing mechanism of the body. So if you have a wound and you keep scratching it, the body will try to fix it, right? To, to mend it. But if you keep scratching it, eventually, it's gonna get infected. Eventually, it's, it could go all the way to concrete. But why? Because, because the body wasn't able to? Because we got on the way of the body. So um, even with the COVID, and I now have a lot of patients that are COVID or post-COVID, uh, rehabbing from COVID, uh, I see it every time. There are people that get it worse than others, but why? And it's, I promise you, it's not even underlying conditions. It's not. It's really the inability to eliminate toxicity. And whoever is able to eliminate toxicity properly just bounces back from COVID like nobody's business. I had a client that was truly, truly a, a, a risk case for pre-existing conditions, specifically to her lungs. COVID just didn't touch her because, I mean, she was also on a lymphatic cleanse when she got COVID, but um, she her elimination pathways were, were already starting to work. So COVID was just you know, moving. There's another thing. Viruses do compete for the host. So if you already have viruses, sometimes based on what your terrain and how the virus finds you, you know, COVID can be kicked out by other viruses in your body. If, you know, you are <clears throat> paying attention to, <clears throat> sorry, to your elimination pathways and making sure you are, you are supporting yourself in your immune system. Again, we all talk about immune system. We want to boost our immune system for all the viruses out there or pre-existing viruses like the repetitive viruses that Anthony talks about. However, the immune system is compromised first and foremost by the amount of toxicity in our body. The more the toxicity, the more the immune system is called to put, up, put out the toxicity, which is acidity in the body. So if we live with a chronic state, state of toxicity, it's basically asking the immune system to be on, on alert all the time. So using already 70, 80% of, of its ability to deal with this toxicity so that we can be functional, or not, not fully functional, so that whenever anything comes from the outside, God forbid another virus, God forbid you know a loss in the family, God forbid major stress, uh, a pandemic, uh, or kids working, being at home all day, then your immune system is already being, um, you know, uh, occupied with dealing with chronic toxicity. So the answer of most of our issues lies in our ability to eliminate properly this toxicity. And again, I said it doesn't matter if it's viruses, uh, a combination of viruses and heavy metals and pesticides and radiation. If we are not able to eliminate, it doesn't matter. And also, so many clients tested, positive for EBV, all different strains, positive for shingles, and yet not everybody re exhibits the same symptoms. Why? It is not just so simple. You got virus, then you got disease. It's not that simple because we're all very different. So our ability to eliminate toxicity, even produced by the viruses itself, even the byproduct that Anthony talks about, lies in our ability to actually properly eliminate this toxicity. So Please, once you decide to get onto this, once you said, okay, I believe this, I believe I can heal myself. I believe in the things that Anthony says. They resonate with me. Most of you say, I feel Anthony was writing to me, which is very common. We all felt that way when we read the books. So if you believe all that and you have decided to take your health into your own hands, then do me a favor and just and just accept to put more attention into elimination pathways, making sure that you prime your body before getting into more uh, you know, deeper type of cleanses, whether it's heavy metals or, or liver cleanses, because as I said, hopefully it will be captured in this kind of two takes. Um, the liver is our master detoxifier. And as Anthony says, we all have some sort of fatty, sluggish liver of, what sort, of some sort, but why? When the toxicity doesn't leave the body, we're asking the liver to filter extra toxicity. So the liver is overburdened because it's not just taking care of toxicity, the daily toxicity, it's in filtering the blood for this purpose, it has to take care of recirculating toxicity. So before we get, if we want to be successful in truly, truly eradicate uh, the root cause of our chronic illnesses, consider priming your body before you start any type of cleanses, any type of, you know, uh, deep heavy metal uh, or any type of deep, um, you know, liver cleanses. Consider um, getting on the lymphatic cleanse 
to make sure that you open up your lymphatic pathway so that you prime your body to all the toxicity that the medical medium protocol stirs up. And so that you know that you, while you stir it up, then you can effectively eliminate. And then you, these are the people that do the testimonials and say, this has changed my life. This is how I feel. Um, a lot of the people that do the lymphatic cleanse, I would say probably 99.9% .9 are medical medium people. And these are not necessarily people that just started out medical medium. These are people that have been on the medical medium for a while, a few years from one year to four years, you know, and things have worked, but then stopped or they started getting worse or they started gaining weight. And as you guys know by now, I've said this over and over again, and I think I've been really the first to, to really put it this way, the body's inability to take care of all the toxicity, especially the recirculating one that doesn't go out, uh, is what is at the base of our uh, weight gain. Weight gain is nothing else but the body protecting ourselves by storing fat to coat toxins in there. And what people don't tell you, if they have said this before, is that the reason why we store toxins in fat is because toxins are acidic from a chemical perspective, are corrosive and acidic. And so lipids, which are the fat, are what contain the, the, the toxicity. That's why we gain weight. So when we have weight, especially in our belly area, this is nothing else but the body talking to you and say, hey, I don't know where else to put these toxins. So here it is. I'm giving you a little nice little donut around your belly so that you can still live and be functional. Um, so the number one thing that we want to do is to lower this chronic toxicity, making sure that it can possibly can effectively go out and then go deeper and then get on the 369, get on the heavy metal detox, uh, doing doing any uh, liver cleanses that we, we think we need to do. Uh, and, and then we will be successful. As far as detox symptoms, um, if you are experiencing any detox symptoms, this is the body talking to you. Uh, someone has asked before, uh, how do I, how do I um, take care of flares when I reintroduce food? Every time I tell my clients, when you decide to reintroduce food, you have to microdose it because the body is not prepared, especially if you haven't eaten them for a long time. The body doesn't have the right amount of bile, enzymes, and hydrochloric acid to process it. So we basically have to give the body a briefing and say, hey, this is what we're planning on doing. Um, children are often given um, when they're little, like, you know, peanut butter or things that are highly allergic, allergenic. And, uh, you know, we just um, put some peanut butter on, on children's uh, gum when they're little just to sensitize the body towards the specific substance. We don't just spoon the peanut butter and just feed them peanut butter, right? We just gently rub the peanut butter on their gum so that it will not develop a, sens a sensibility towards that specific agent. So the same is the same truth is, is true for when we start reintroducing food. The body needs to be primed. So you can't just go from low fat to a full avocado. It doesn't work that way. The body isn't able to process it. You can't just go from, you know, no grains to having grains with beans together, especially. So when we reintroduce food, we microdose it. By microdose, I really mean one thing only at the time, almost like when you start from a, an elimination diet and start adding things on. You add one thing at a time. And so you add your grain, one type of grain, for the whole week. And you see how that works. But when you add it, it just it's not the rice uh, or whatever you do, quinoa or millet. Uh, and then you know, as I see a lot of people eating, lots of rice, lots of beans. Um, you don't do a combination like that. You don't do uh, legumes and, and, and grains. You know, it's too much for the body to handle. So you microdose, you, you take your time if you wanna get to a point where you are able to then uh, pass probably, um, uh, know, sorry, effectively uh, digest and eliminate. Because the other thing is, um, most of us are able to to withstand different kind of food, right? It doesn't mean though, because we're able to digest it faster than other people, that it's not harming us. So a lot of time, as I said, the liver just stores stuff. When he's not able to process, it's just gonna store it. So years of, you know, um, unconscious uh, grain eating, because grains have a place, but they are triggers and inflammatory. So if enough for everybody, for some people, as some grains more than others. So if we just eat mind mindlessly, the body eventually will show us the bill at the end, even if we don't feel the symptoms, even if we go, okay, well, I think I can eat it. Um, so be mindful of having um, a heavier meal. The next day, just go on juicing. 
uh, go back on saddle, just do all fruit, you know, just, just be light because you give the body the way to compensate, the chance to compensate instead of, you know, adding. One thing that I see, I have a lot of young clients, um, teenagers and, and whatnot, overseas as well. And what I see is that once they get better, and they will do, it's hard with the teenagers to then tell them, you know, now you're feeling better, uh, so just try to stay mindful. So yesterday, a client, the mother told me, I mean, is it in chocolate, Nutella, is it in this and this? I don't know what to do. That is the problem. Because right now, it's feeling great and it's not maybe feeling it too much. But at some point, I promise you, the body will bring you the check and say, hey, um, what's going on? Because it's the build-up effect, the build-up of toxicity. And, you know, the fact that the body can digest Nutella maybe once in a while, yes, maybe once every blue moon. But you can't do Nutella three times a week. You know, there's it's just... It, it's going to build up toxicity. So as you lower the toxicity bucket, you want to make sure that once you feel better, because you will feel better, you will feel amazing, you don't start building that toxicity bucket again. So mindfulness uh, is what I teach in my Balance 21. And finding the balance, it's possible. Yes, it's possible to have a life that is actually um, full and, and, uh, and joyous and where you can enjoy others. You can have your date nights. You can have your, your, your birthdays and, and holidays. But mindfulness, um, you know, getting rid of chronic illnesses doesn't mean that eventually you're going to go back to the life that we used to have when we were teenagers, because that's kind of what eventually brought us to where we are right now. It took us time for us to get to where we are. So, but it means that we learn tools so that if we want to get away with a birthday dinner or we want to get away with whatever it is that we, um, you know, choose to, to eat and nourish ourselves with, then we know what the tools are to help the body compensate and even when the toxicity is just emotional if you know that you're going going through um through emotion through heavy stress or uh the the griefing process of you know the loss of a loved one then you know that you need to take care of yourself and make sure that you leave the body enough energy to take care of that imbalance by being mindful of what you eat so when i go through heavy period of stress i basically self-restrain myself like in this very moment um, I will disclose more information and news that are coming up probably in the next few weeks. And there's so many exciting news, including, you know, the retreats coming up again, because, you know, we're going to start living again. So we ha I have new dates for 2021 and new things have coming your way that will blow your mind. But that requires also a lot of energy for me and a lot of stress. So when I'm going through this period, I basically set for strain myself. I, I become even more diligent than what I'm usually because I know that the body is going through has to metabolize all the stress. So I go on has extra juicing. I, I do very high fruit, you know, I'm fully raw because I know that, you know, I need to give the body a chance to take care of that and not using energy to metabolize my food. So, um, you guys, we are starting another lymphatic cleanse on the 7th next week. And I beg you to read the, the, um, the testimonial. The reason why everybody loves this cleanse is because it does work. It does work. It works for everybody. It works at different levels. Now, three weeks are merely scratching the, the surface for some people. Uh, so will you experience some symptoms? Of course. Of course. Because we're, it, the more your emulation pathways are clogged and the more symptoms you will experience. But it is easier than most of the cleanses you've ever done. And that is based on people's testimonial who have done the medical menu for a while and who has done all the medical menu protocols. And not because those protocols or those cleanses don't work. I try to explain to people that I'm doing the lymphatic cleanse to work in synergy with the medical menu protocol so that once we clean up the lymphatic pathways, the elimination pathways, you can successfully take advantage of a 369 or a heavy metal detox and all that. Um, and most and first and foremost, I'll teach you the tools for you guys to learn your body. Like I said at the very beginning, there's no one like you, so do not compare or do not use this group for anything other than support, but do not ask these people what to do because you know what to do. Do not ask the group what to do. You know what to do. So start learning your body. And the lymphatic cleanse the, in the cleanse school will give you the tools to learn your body and understand why your body is reacting a certain way. So I would love to see you all next week in the lymphatic cleanse. And the, the most amazing thing of all is that this time for the first time you'll have the chance to go back to back to lymphatic cleanse one and two and the reason why i've launched the lymphatic cleanse level two is because so many people love the lymphatic one and stayed on it for a while which was not my intention anyway but there's also a lot of people with heavy chronic conditions worse than others and so 
I've worked with a select number of clients in critical conditions to design the level two. And it's a deeper level of detoxification uh, and um, elimination of uh, toxicity in the body by really going deep, focusing on digestion, uh, focusing on kidneys and lymphatic system to really open up these pathways.